Hi everybody! Hey guys! Last week we made a video about our shower build and how we had to rip it all apart and remodel it. Yeah, and I thought that Ryan should tell you guys about the recirculating shower system that he designed and where he got the idea and why he wanted to put it in. So that's what this video is about. All the things about our recirculating shower system. When we were doing all the research into do we want to build a van or do we want to buy an RV, I was watching videos of other people's builds and one of the things I came across was a recirculating shower system. A lot of the van builds that we were researching only have 15 or 20 gallon freshwater tanks and so to take a five minute long shower you use a good chunk of that. So what a recirculating shower system does is it reclaims the water that goes to the drain, forces it through a bunch of filters. 1.5 micron. through a reheating system to heat the water back up and then sends it back through the shower head. This comes down to our heat exchanger, which goes out to the shower head. So you're taking a shower in water that's been recycled. And so you're not just dumping fresh water over your head and then into a storage tank to be dumped out later. It's using it over and over again. And so technically you can take a shower for as long as you want. And it sounded really interesting to try and figure that out for living off grid. Like if you had to go dry camp somewhere for a week or two weeks to be able to use your shower as much as you want without having to worry about how much water you're using. So we started doing a bunch of research into it and I found out the system was originally called a shower loop. Uh, a student in the Netherlands somewhere uh, wrote it for a research paper, something along those lines, and had a bunch of components that he built and designed and laser cut. And it looked really interesting, but the components are really difficult to get a hold of because he manufactured a lot of them himself. So I started looking into ways to do it with off-the-shelf parts. And that's what we designed and installed here. And when we ripped apart the shower, it made it even easier to design what we were doing because I could see all the plumbing layout, I could see how much room we were working with, and then we weren't trying to cram it underneath the shower that was already existing. We were building a shower from scratch on top of it anyway, so we could put whatever we wanted under there. So what we designed is a system that has two drains. One drain uh, goes to the gray water system, so you can use the shower as a normal shower, like we are right now in an RV park. We have water coming in, we have a septic system, so we can just use it like a regular shower. The other drain goes to a five gallon holding tank that then pumps through a series of filters and back out the shower head. One of the things I really wanted to do with this system is to make it really easy to use because if it was a pain in the butt to use and you had to crawl underneath stuff and reach in and pull valves and to redo all the water system, we probably wouldn't use it very often. So one of my goals was to make it push button. You could hit a button and change the mode of the shower. So that was one of the big challenges in creating this system from scratch. So I've gone through Photoshop and I've sort of outlined and mapped out where all of our pipes go, what kind of components we used, and I'll show you how our system is laid out and how the water flows through the system so you can get an idea of what it actually does. This is an overview of our shower system plumbing. I'll start with the extra drains that we added. The first drain up near the top of this diagram right here is the original plumbing that went to our gray water holding tank. So we kept a drain for that so we can use it like a normal shower. The second drain right here is the one that we added that goes to our five gallon holding tank for the recirculating system. The original plumbing came across the back of the shower into the corner and went up to the shower head. So what we did is we cut those pipes and interrupted the water flow and brought those pipes down out into a storage bay where we could add some valves and be able to service them if they ever died on us. So these are actually outside in a storage bay. So these two valves can be left open and water can flow like it normally does up to the shower head out of our fresh water system, or we can close it and interrupt that supply and then use the hot water supply from the fresh system and funnel it into the heat exchanger to heat up the heat exchanger. And then we bring it back out into the cold line that goes back into our freshwater storage tank. So this effectively lets us use our fresh water system 
as a hot water loop to bring hot water into the heat exchanger to heat up our recirculating water. Shower water drains into the five gallon tank and then is pumped into a pre-filter that filters out any grit or hair or fuzz that we don't want to go through the pump. And then it can go to a system of valves that one can close that blocks off the filter system and another one opens that then allows us to drain the five gallon tank into our gray water tank when we want to refresh the water. If we reverse those valves, it closes off the drain valve and opens up the one to the filters. It then water can be pumped through a 20 micron pleated filter, a five micron pleated filter, then into a five micron activated charcoal filter, into a UV light to kill off any remaining bacteria, and then it's teed. One direction goes back to the shower head as our cold loop, which is whatever temperature the water is in the tank. And the second direction goes into our heat exchanger, which passes through the heat exchanger fins and heats up the water before going to the hot tap on the shower head. Water line from the tank, filter, filter, pump. It tees off. This goes to the drain it's for when we want to drain the whole system. This goes to the filters, so it goes across over to here and out over to the filters. It's got one filter, two, three filters, UV filter, comes back up and across to here to where it tees. This is the cold line. It'll be heated to whatever the temperature of the tank is already, but this goes out to the shower head this comes down to our heat exchanger which goes out to the shower head these two lines we've got one here and one here this is a hot water line from the water heater goes through the a little pump through a heat exchanger back out the cold line back to the water heater to keep the heat exchanger heated this is the main controller that controls all the valves. This is the Arduino Mega. It's connected to a 16 channel relay. It's all hooked up to all the components so that when we push a button, it turns everything on and off the way it's supposed to. So everything that we used, we bought off the shelf. And everything that we purchased off of Amazon ran something around $1,100. And then we probably spent a couple hundred dollars more in plumbing fixtures, crimping tools, PEX fittings, all kinds of little odds and ends like that probably totaled somewhere around $1,300 or $1,400 to get the entire thing installed. This particular build was interesting because we were trying to fit it into an already built system. The plumbing was already run, uh, the floor was already in. If you were building something from scratch like a van, it'd be a little bit easier because you could figure out and plan out everything right from the beginning and figure out how to fit everything. Our challenge was to try and fit all the components into existing spaces, route all the pipes through existing spaces, and still make it accessible so that we could change out the filters and access stuff if things leaked, if they broke, or whatever. My biggest thing was I didn't want to put anything that needed to possibly be serviced, like valves or filters, under something that we couldn't get to. Like once we built the shower, there was no way I wanted to put a valve under there that could break, could need a new seal, could crack or anything like that underneath the shower. So that's why it routes outside into the cabinet where it's all accessible. We can actually get to it, take the, take the valves off and replace them if they burn out. So that's our whole shower system. It's pretty complicated now that we look back at all of it. It seemed like it was gonna be a little bit easier than it turned out to be. It's complicated, it's got a lot of components. Probably the hardest thing for us was trying to make it all fit in the space that we had, but it's done and it's working. This kind of project isn't for everybody. It takes a lot of willpower to get it done. And since every RV is different, trying to retrofit in an RV could be a, it could be an impossible task depending on the RV. I was just telling the camera how everything was the worst. It is. It's been two days and I feel like we've gotten nothing done. Except for we have gotten a lot. Yeah, that's not true. It just feels like just we've done feels. nothing done. But if you have the space and the a way to get pipes and things into where it needs to go, it's a great system. We've really liked it. We were in Zion National Park 
for five days and we barely used any water and we were able to take showers every single day. It was pretty great. So hopefully that made sense and you can understand how all this works. Uh, again, it's not for everybody. So, and this isn't really a how to, this is how we did it. There's tons of information out online. If you have any questions about something specific that you wanna know how we did something, if you saw something interesting or you wanna know what component we used, uh, leave us a comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe because we're making videos like this more and more. Okay, we'll see you later, bye.